Welcome everyone to the St. Ignatius College Prep Virtual College Fair. We have a killer lineup of institutions for you to hear from this evening. But before I turn it over to them, I have a couple of housekeeping items for you all. First of all, um, this is a webinar, so your camera and your microphone are off. Um, so our panelists cannot see or hear you this evening. Secondly, I think you're going to really enjoy this, um, pan this panel and this format for learning about multiple colleges at once. So I hope that you sign up for more sessions because there's two more full hours of um, these panels happening after this one. This session is being recorded and it, so it will be available at strivescan.com slash Ignatius within one week. Finally, we know that you're going to have some questions, so at any point you can put your question in the Q&A at the bottom of your screen, but also note the college or university that you're directing your question to so our panelists can answer appropriately. This is also um, in a six by five format, which means five colleges only have six minutes to share great information with you. So we hope it's just enough where you're able to um, hear a little bit more, but want to, to learn more as well. So before I um, before we go on, I'm going to turn it over to our first panelist, which is Beloit College. Take it away whenever you're ready. Let me just get my screen up there. Hopefully you can all see that. We can. Um, perfect. Uh, hi, St. Ignatius. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm so happy to be here. My name is Jana Fritz, and I'm an admission counselor at Beloit College, and I'm also an alum. I graduated just last year, um, almost a year ago already, I can't believe it, in May of 2020. Um, so I'm here to talk to you about Beloit, which is a small liberal arts college in Wisconsin. We're just in the south of Wisconsin, though, almost on the border, or on the border with Illinois. Um, so we are a fairly small school. We're about 1,200 students, and we have students that come from all over the country and all over the world. Uh, we're very proud with that um, high number of diversity, especially socioeconomically, racially, and culturally. Um, we also have a large um, percentage of our students that really like to study majors in multiple different subjects. So these are our most popular majors on screen, which is um, anthropology, biochemistry, creative writing, and more. Um, so our students like to choose a little bit more than just one. Um, we have one out of three students that double major because they're so curious and they want to take classes in all different subjects. Um, and that's very successful on campus with our students because we have around 93% of our um, students that continue into grad school or um, into the workforce. Uh, within six months of graduation. Um, and they can do so because they have so much amazing support while they're here on campus. Um, and of course, in the future as well, we're always here. Um, but most uh, importantly is our advanced mentoring program. So within 72 hours of depositing and choosing Beloit, um, you get to get a major or an advisor right away. And they're not going to be a major advisor. They're they're just going to kind of be that friendly face guiding you to campus, choosing your classes with you, all that kind of stuff um, within three days of you getting here or, you know, choosing Beloit. Um, they're also going to be having a class with you. That means every two weeks um, going through workshops and creating connections with you and with the Beloit community and the college um, to help you kind of form your academic path. And once you choose your major and get a little more focused into what you want to do, you can be a part of a career channel, um, which is kind of another set of support um, through courses, internships, and anything um, to really help you get more grounded in your field of study. Um, and this map on the screen just shows where we are located um, because we do have some for uh, Fortune 500 companies in the area of Beloit, um, but also Madison, Milwaukee, and Chicago that are within an hour to an hour and a half from our campus. So you have kind of that smaller city um, focused academic vibe on campus, but as well as the larger experiences from a larger city very close by. Um, we are dedicated to our students, not just in academics, but also on campus by having a campus that is quite literally designed for you um, with our powerhouse. That's the main photo you're seeing there. It is a, a old coal powered energy plant that was in the city and we bought it and rebuilt it into our student union and recreation center. Um, in there you have the food, the fun, the workout facilities, um, club meeting spaces, our health and wellness center with counseling, everything a college student needs to be successful all in that building. So it is new, it just opened in February of 2020 um, and kind of reused and repurposed um, this year with the pandemic. But beyond campus and beyond um, that building in specific, we have also 18 varsity 
teams for athletics, um, as well as really purposeful um, employment opportunities on campus, resume building um, employment options. So it's not just going to be kind of a way to get money, it's going to be a way to get experience as well. Um, we have a bunch of student clubs and intramurals, we have a student leadership office, as well as an amazing downtown right from campus. So everything you need to be successful as a student and as a person um, is all right here in Beloit for you. Um, the most, I think, the thing that sets us apart the most from some of the colleges you're going to hear from today is our um, reaction to the COVID pandemic. So we're actually recognized as the number five most innovative college in the country. Country, and a lot of that is because of our plan called the Beloit Action Plan in reaction to COVID. Um, so it's a set of academic, personal, and financial support, um, like a career accelerator just helping you for your future, but also the Midwest flagship match. And as residents of Illinois, we are promising to match the flagship tuition cost of your flagship university. Um, so for Illinois, for the University of Illinois um, Urbana campaign, it's around $16,000. So from our tuition that's kind of high, goes right away down to um, $16,000. So it's an amazing, amazing program that we're doing and we are continuing for the incoming year that you're going to be incoming. Um, but also our statement of culture, um, our students rewrote the behavioral expectations for COVID and what campus life is going to look like during a pandemic. And we've done really, really, really well with that. Um, so if you are a student that likes to take control and likes to act and protect themselves against the pandemic, um, we would love to have you apply to Beloit. So I work with students from St. Ignatius and I'd love to see your application in the fall. Um, we are actually rated number two in the nation for financial aid. So please file that FAFSA, that federal aid, um, and we would be able to provide you with that Midwest flagship tuition. Um, in the application review, we do look at more than just a transcript. We look at everything from your letters of recommendation, your essay, extracurriculars, um, everything that you're involved in to really see what you are like as a student holistically, not just um, on paper through your grades. Um, we're also test optional. We have been for a very long time and we'll continue to do so. So we're very proud to say that. Um, so please consider applying. And if you have any questions before or even during that process, um, please contact me. Like I said before, I work with students from St. Ignatius. So I'd love to see your applications. Um, my email's on the screen there and I can pop it in the chat as well after. But thank you so much for listening. Um, enjoy the rest of this presentation and I hope to see your application. Thank you. Yana, thanks so much to you and Beloit College. Audience, don't forget, you can put those questions in the Q&A at any time point. Uh, any point in time, sorry. Um, next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Swanee, the University of the South. Reese, take it away whenever you're ready. All righty, can you see me on screen? Yes. <laughs> it is very good to be here. Um, thank you all for sitting down and, and listening, and of course, for the recording later on. So uh, my name is Reese Jamison. I am an admission counselor here at the University of the South Swanee. Um, I should probably share the video presentation that we have for you all tonight. Um, to talk a little bit about Swanee. So um, we are a small liberal arts institution in Southeast Tennessee, located about an hour and a half from Nashville, 45 minutes from Chattanooga and two and a half hours from Birmingham and Atlanta respectively. Um, and so I'm gonna have my colleague Taylor in video form, uh, explain a little bit more about who Swanee is. Um, and I will leave my contact info in the chat uh, if you all have any any more questions, I'm happy to help. Hi, I'm Taylor Baird. I'm a graduate of Swanee and I currently work in the Office of Admission. And I get to tell you a little bit about my home for the past 10 years. You might be thinking, hmm, Swanee, the University of the South, what does that entail? The University of the South is so much more than a campus that we had to create new words for it. It's the mountain. It's our home on the Cumberland Plateau. It's the domain, situated between Nashville and Chattanooga. It's a working farm, a 13,000 acre forest, a natural playground with trails to hike and rocks to climb. But above all, it's a community. That's Swanee. And it's a place that I hope you'll consider calling home one day too. The domain is where we live, eat, research, recreate, reflect, and compete. I mean, 30% of our students are scholar athletes competing on one of our division three varsity athletic teams. 
it's a lot, and we like it that way. Our university motto, Eke Quam Bonum, or EQB, ensures that we push each other and appreciate each other while dwelling together in unity. You'll be sharing Swanee with about 1,700 other 17 to 22 year olds and the broader community. So there's rarely a dull moment here. While we're nestled in Tennessee, you're still gonna be encouraged and expected to engage with a global community. We want you to address global issues and engage in a way that connects Swanee with the rest of the world. This is a place where everybody stands up for what they think and for what they believe in. That dialogue across difference and that true discourse is the environment that we strive to cultivate. For example, we have deep roots with the Episcopal Church, but we know that it's important to create a healthy interfaith environment here for students as well. With the combination of intellectual rigor and community, Swanee will help you figure out who you are. As an institution, we've been exploring who we've been and who we are. We want to model that for students, that you're exploring those questions, and that asking questions and seeking solutions is commonplace. You can do that at Swanee because your professors are teachers and mentors first and researchers second. We believe in educating the whole person through the liberal arts education. That's what happens when you engage with your professors. You get out into the field and you wrestle with the questions that the world hasn't figured out the answers to yet. It's in that process that you will enhance your studies, hone your skills, and increase your postgraduate prospects. In hoping that you'll engage that way, we've made a commitment to you, the Swanee Pledge. And the commitment is simple. We pledge to provide funding for a summer internship or research opportunity during your time at Swanee. We also pledge that you'll be able to make global connections by providing access to a semester-long study abroad program at no additional tuition cost. And finally, we pledge that you'll graduate in four consecutive years with at least one major. If you do not, you can study for an additional year at Swanee and no additional tuition cost. At Swanee, if you give your best in good faith, we will honor that dedication and effort. You won't even have to compete with graduate students for these opportunities, and in many cases, worry about the funding that make them possible. Swanee believes in access as much as we do excellence, which is why we're committed to meeting 100% of demonstrated financial need for all admitted first-year students. We also recognize academic achievement, so in addition to need-based aid, we do offer academic scholarships as well. Our goal is to accept the most talented students for whom Swanee is the best choice, and then to provide the financial aid package that makes it possible for you to enroll here. That's the Swanee lens. We want to find strong fit students and guide you through the search and application process. Swanee is a common application school and there's no fee to apply. We also know that test scores aren't always the best indicator of a student's academic success. And that's why at Swanee we're test optional. That allows you to choose to submit the ACT, SAT, or no scores at all. So if you're ready to take this journey and opt into this experience, I hope you'll choose to apply to Swanee. I can't wait to see how you'll make this place your home and bring your perspective to our community. So thank you for that, Ms. Taylor Baird. Um, I will also leave in the uh, chat uh, our link to our visit page. We have a wealth of um, both virtual uh, visit options for you to learn more information. Um, and then we also are open to uh, campus tours um, safely with masks and uh, at a distance for our juniors and seniors as well. So um, should you be uh, in Tennessee's neck of the woods, uh, feel free to sign up for a visit. Reese, thank you so much to you and Swanee. Next up, I have the pleasure of introducing to you Lawrence University. Keegan, take it away whenever you're ready. Thanks, Courtney. Like all of my colleagues, I am going to quickly share my screen here so that hopefully you can see our beautiful campus in, in Appleton. Hello, Wolfpack. Uh, my name is indeed Keegan White, and I'm an Associate Director of Admissions at Lawrence University. And Lawrence is a small college of about 1,500 students located three and a half hours north of Chicago in beautiful Appleton, Wisconsin. 
Appleton's the fifth largest city in the state of Wisconsin, and you'll find an airport, a bus station that will get you to Chicago in about four hours. Uh, several airlines fly direct to O'Hare, um, as well as a bustling downtown with coffee shops, restaurants, farmers market, uh, tra trails around, along the river, several museums, um, performing arts center that hosts the biggest touring Broadway shows like Hamilton, Wicked, and Dear Evan Hansen. Um, here we go. <clears throat> Lawrence is, uh, is unique in that we are both a nationally ranked College of Liberal Arts and Sciences and a highly selective conservatory of music. Both are undergraduate only and our students pursue either a Bachelor of Arts degree in our college, a Bachelor of Music degree in our conservatory, or both through our five-year double degree program. We offer a wide range of majors across the humanities, sciences, and the fine arts. Students are challenged and nurtured through personalized experiences in our small classes with a ton of faculty connections, thanks in part to our eight to one student to faculty ratio, which is one of the smallest in the country. We have a student body that's inherently curious, welcoming, engaged, and passionate about what they do. Faculty are equally engaged, not only with their own scholarship, but especially in their teaching. At Lawrence, we're small in number, but rich in people and resources, all deeply invested in the success of our students. The academic program at Lawrence is bookended by two quintessential scholarly experiences, first year studies and senior experience. First year studies is an expansive introduction to the liberal arts, which ensures that each student and faculty member is exposed to a diversity of subjects and perspectives, and is the opportunity to learn, communicate, and expand their horizons. Senior experience is the culmination of a Lawrence education, unique to each individual student, yet universal to students across the university. Every graduating senior produces something significant. It could be an independent or collaborative research project, an art exhibition, scholarly paper, or a senior recital for our music students. The point is that you're sharing your gifts, generating new knowledge, or as we call it, new light, and preparing for your next steps in life. Our distinctive academic journey through the liberal arts teaches Laurentians to be adaptable, to thrive in difficult circumstances, something that we all could have used a bit more of this year, I might add. Uh, and it doesn't just prepare you for a career, but rather helps you to flourish professionally, personally, and as a contributing member of your community. It's no coincidence that our recent graduates enjoyed a 98% placement rate six months after graduation. Like most of the colleges represented tonight, Lawrence is a residential community with nearly 100% of our students living on campus all four years. And they live large, engaged in activities outside of the classroom with endless enthusiasm and panache. Here at Lawrence, we have all the amenities of a big school in a big city right outside our residence hall doors. So NCA Division III athletics, world-class music ensembles and theater productions, 150 student organizations, events both large and small. Suffice it to say, if you have a passion that you want to pursue in college, you'll find an outlet here at Lawrence. In addition to our residential campus in Appleton, we have two satellite campuses. The first uh, is Bjorklinden. You can see it on, on the screen here, which is where we launch our Viking raids against all other Wisconsin and Michigan schools. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's actually a lodge on a mile of Lake Michigan shorefront in beautiful Door County, Wisconsin, uh, that students use as a retreat center um, for, for, for weekend getaways. And it's truly a beautiful and serene setting that holds a very special place in the heart of all Laurentians. Um, our, our last campus is our London Center in central London, England, which is the most popular of our 50 study abroad programs. So if you're looking for a global experience, you'll find Lawrence's student body and faculty to be diverse, with nearly every race and state represented, 25% of whom are first-generation college students, and 15% hailing from 50 foreign countries on every continent. The Lawrence curriculum, community, and campuses are sure to broaden your horizons. Here's a quick look at the average profile of our incoming Laurentians. 
Lawrence has a holistic review process and we do not require standardized test scores for admission review or scholarship consideration. Like our friends at Beloit, we've been uh, doing a test optional model for, for many years. Uh, for some Lawrence applicants, an optional interview is a great way to help me discover your true fit and ability to succeed here at Lawrence. Just remember that the first key is to show your academic preparedness or potential. Lawrence also has a generous financial aid policy with nearly 100% of our students receiving merit scholarships between $18,000 and $31,000 per year for four years and over half receiving additional need-based Lawrence grants. We meet the financial need of, of over 90% of admitted students and are working our way towards 100% in the next few years. Uh, and don't forget about me. I'm your trusty admissions counselor, and I really put you at the center of what I do. Courtney can attest before she cuts me off that um, I really make it make it my my life's work to to serve the students that I work with. So I really look forward to to working with you. Uh, and and with that, I will hand it back to to Courtney. Thanks, Courtney. Keegan, thanks so much to you and Lawrence University. Aren't you guys having fun? I told you this was a really great format to learn about so many great schools in a short time frame. Next up, I have the opportunity to introduce to you Kenyon College. Jack, take it away whenever you're ready. Fantastic. Thank you, Courtney. Thank you to all my colleagues uh, presenting tonight as well and to all our students joining us. It is a privilege to be here with you um, this evening. Uh, my name is Jack Iyer. I'm an Associate Director of Admissions with uh, Kenyon College, uh, and I represent uh, students from the state of Illinois. So certainly that is you all. So I'm thrilled to have the chance to speak with you um, this evening a little bit about uh, Kenyon College. Um, we're a small private liberal arts college. We're located in Gambier, Ohio, uh, which is in very, very much central Ohio, just north of Columbus, the state capital. Uh, 1,700 students in total with our entire student body that come from all 50 states, as well as over 40 uh, different countries. And actually, the Chicagoland area is very much our third most um, uh, represented city in terms of uh, in our student body. So just a little bit of, of ideas um, about, about that. So we were founded in 1824. We're one of the nation's finest liberal arts college. Uh, we're actually um, the oldest college, uh, private college in the state of Ohio. Uh, and so a little bit of uh, fun fact, um, fun fact there. Um, we are located on a hilltop campus, um, uh, similar to a few other uh, institutions represented tonight. Uh, we are 100% residential, so you will live on campus for all four years. Um, on top of that, you'll notice that one of the biggest things with the layout of the college is that it's actually all the buildings at Kenyon kind of connect to what's called middle path, which is very much a mile long path that connects all the different buildings, whether it's the residence halls or academic buildings, uh, it all connects uh, to middle path. So it's very kind of easy to, to navigate uh, in a way. Again, like I said earlier, just under 1,700 students uh, are in our student body. This gives you kind of a visual representation of where we are in Gambier, in Ohio, um, as well as kind of the driving distance of where um, uh, a lot of students are coming from uh, in our student body with a lot of major metropolitan areas um, across the entirety of uh, the United States. From here, you'll see a list of all of our different areas of study. I won't necessarily go into too much detail here, um, but you'll notice that uh, all these different areas of study are options for you to explore. And a lot of times it's very, very common uh, at Kenyon for students to come in and explore a lot of different areas of academic interest. So you'll actually have on top of courses for your major, you'll be required to take two courses in fine arts, two humanities, two social science, a quantitative reasoning course, um, as well as a two semester foreign language requirement. You'll take all these courses um, uh, in combination with the courses that you select for one of your majors. And so uh, these are all different opportunities for you uh, or areas, disciplines for you to select for um, your major. About 15 students uh, per class, uh, and that's very much um, typical across all disciplines at Kenyon, so regardless of if you're studying physics or economics or French or what have you. Um, introductory classes might be a little bit larger. A large class at Kenyon is very much like 35 to 40. As you get into your upper level classes, those classes will actually get much, much smaller, where you could very typically find a class that's six or seven students. And so if you know that you, you thrive in that type of atmosphere where you can see yourself connecting closely with your peers and professors, you will very much find that in the classroom at Kenyon, really regardless of, of the types of courses that you're taking. A lot of times students at Kenyon pursue opportunities um, with various on-campus jobs or various on-campus um, 
kind of uh, roles that function similarly to internships. Uh, one of the most popular ways in which um, students do that is for our students interested in English or literature or um, creative writing. Kenyon has a significant amount of, of uh, traditions and prestige in, in those areas. And so a lot of students uh, get connected with our Kenyan Review, which is actually an, inter an internationally acclaimed literary magazine uh, where the students who work with the Kenyan Review uh, serve as first readers for a number of different submissions that are um, that kind of uh, flow through the review. So for those of you interested in, in English or literature or um, uh, literary magazines, the Kenyan Review would be a, a really neat opportunity as well as the Gun Gallery for uh, any of you that might be interested uh, in studio art or art uh, history, curatorial work, museum work, those things of the sort. Uh, the Gun Gallery is a, is a neat opportunity for students to take advantage of as well. And then a lot of times students are very interested in pursuing some sort of us, um, uh, some sort of research uh, during their time at Kenyon. And so oftentimes this takes place through the natural sciences, but it can take place through the social sciences, humanities, all the disciplines uh, at Kenyon. And so you actually have the opportunity to do research on campus with a professor, as well as a group of other peers of yours, uh, and actually live on campus during the course of, of your summer, uh, and really engage uh, heavily uh, with your research group, and actually oftentimes with the goal of uh, presenting your work at a conference or at a we're working to get published, something of that sort. So there's plenty of opportunities in the research world um, as well. One really neat feature about where we are in Ohio is that uh, we have actually a significant amount of relationships with various farmers in central Ohio. So a lot of uh, food, uh, just under 50%, is actually locally sourced because Kenyon will purchase a lot of the dairy, meat, produce, et cetera, from all of our local farmers. And so uh, that is one really neat thing that you'll find about the food um, at, uh, at Kenyon. A little bit more with our uh, performing arts scene here, some pictures. Um, other things to note, um, just under 90% of students graduate uh, in, in four years. And so uh, we very much work towards, uh, you know, students graduating um, over the course of, of four years, a very high rate there. Um, another really important thing to note is that when you, for those of you that might be interested in thinking about um, graduate school, uh, so things like, uh, you know, whether it's a um, professional program or master's degree or um, any sort of, of um, doctorate uh, program, those, uh, if, if as long as you work alongside all of our advisors in our career development office, uh, you will have the opportunity uh, to, to work with them and receive their advising and actually you'll be placed at a very high rate uh, in, in that regard. So with that, um, Kind of last, um, lastly, I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you might have about Kenyon, uh, and thank you so much uh, for your time. I will hand it back over to uh, to Courtney. So thank you all again. Thanks so much, Jack, to you and Kenyon College. Our final presentation tonight will be from the University of Tampa. Veronica, take it away whenever you're ready. All right. Hi, everyone. Hi, St. Ignatius. Thanks for having me. Let me just swap this view real quick. My name is Veronica. I am one of the admissions counselors here working um, with students from Illinois. I'm also an alumni of UT, and I'm from the Chicagoland area as well. So from Vernon Hills, I attended UT and graduated this past May of 2020. So I'll shed light on my experience and paint a picture as quickly as I can in six minutes for you and what UT is all about. So we're located in West Central Florida, um, neighboring Orlando, Miami, the Tampa Bay area, surrounding cities of St. Pete and Clearwater. We're about a five minute walk into the downtown, which lends itself for entertainment and, and event opportunities and internship and career opportunities as well. So this picture gives you a good feel of where we are in relation to that. We of course get to take advantage of beautiful sunny weather year round for the most part. Um, and we have beautiful beaches for students to access that something that I definitely took advantage of during my time here at UT. Beyond that, there's a lot happening in this metropolitan area. As I mentioned, tons of entertainment and events, um, museums and art galleries, and we have puppies come to the park across the way and food festivals, seasonal events like Oktoberfest, a winter village. So you get that Illinois a winter atmosphere. You just skip out on the snow and the cold. I don't think anyone's complaining. We're home to three major sports teams, and this has been a really exciting year to watch on Unfold. So there are plenty of opportunities both on and off campus for students to get involved with in the community. 
We're a private institution, so it's the same cost for in-state and out-of-state tuition. We're independent, so we don't have a religious affiliation, and we're a medium-sized school. So not too big, not too small, roughly 9,600 students. You'll constantly see familiar faces on campus and new faces as well. We have a very urban environment with the campus feel, so I like to say you'll experience the best of both worlds. You have a city life and campus atmosphere all in one. This is a great aerial shot where you can see our campus is very tight-knit, self contained, no major city streets running through it, but you have that accessibility factor to the downtown, which is huge. We also have a very diverse student body. So we have our average student traveling a thousand miles away from home to attend UT. So coming from Illinois, you're certainly not alone. Um, we're diverse in a lot of ways, socioeconomically and ethnically, but especially especially geographically. So you won't feel like an outsider here at UT. Switching gears, our average class size is roughly 22 students, 17 to one student to faculty ratio. 90% of our professors have their PhD or terminal degree in their field. So highest degree in their field. These intimate classroom um, sizes are great for building relationship with your professors. They're very accessible with office hours throughout the week. And the class sizes are pretty comparable to what you're already used to in high school. So we don't have any graduate assistants or any large lecture halls. We offer over 200 different areas of study. So there's a ton um, to choose from. The two big ones we don't offer are engineering and or architecture. But if you're an undecided student, this is a very safe school. You can consider double majoring, majoring and minoring in fields that are unrelated. And a few of our programs are not direct admit. So just to highlight those real quick, that would be nursing, education, athletic training and performing art majors are audition based. So just something to keep in the back of your mind. Um, but we have a very strong focus on experiential education. So learning by doing, taking what you learn in the classroom and applying it to a real world scenario. So that might look a little bit different for all of you depending on where your interests lie. But we have that strong focus on experiences. So whether that's an internship or research or working in the labs, um, high tech facilities, we really invest in our facilities on campus. So you get that hands-on experience. And I didn't really have um, an opportunity to touch on internships, but given our proximity to the downtown, those are plentiful as well. And a lot of different ways students can go about receiving those. Um, we also offer about 97% of our students financial aid. So at the time that you apply, you're automatically considered for merit-based awards, recognizing your academic achievement. Be sure to complete the FAFSA as well. We have a handy little tool on our website called the Net Price Calculator to help with some estimation of tuition and fees. And the good news for everyone is that we are test optional through the spring of 2023. So that applies to you if you are a current junior. You don't need to send your essay to your ACT score. Instead, just be sure to send your essay, an official transcript, a letter of recommendation, and your application, which can be on the Common App, UT application, or coalition application. And I have our deadlines listed here. It's um, important to either take a screenshot of this or Find that on the website. I would aim for the November 15th deadline. If you're a junior, get all your materials together over the summer, apply early fall. That way you hear an official update by December 20th and you can plan um, accordingly. We are rolling admission and all of these deadlines are non-binding. And lastly, I just have our contact, my contact information here. If you wanna stay connected, shoot me an email. I'd be happy to send you a fee waiver when this time rolls around in the fall. So you can waive that application fee. We're also hosting many virtual events throughout the year and we are hosting in-person visits if you plan on making a trip down to um, Tampa. So I hope to see you and I hope to hear from you. Thank you all so much. Veronica, thanks so much to you and the University of Tampa. Weren't those great presentations? I'm now gonna ask our panelists to turn back on their cameras and share a little bit more about their institutions. So we'll go round Robin in the same order that you presented originally. What is your favorite event or tradition on campus? Or feel free to share an interesting or fun fact if you'd rather. So we'll start with Beloit first. Thank you, Courtney. Um, I think my favorite event on campus is called Spring Day, uh, where it's one day in the spring where we cancel all classes and all jobs. You don't have to work that day. And we um, have giant inflatables, bumper cars, eat lots of cotton candy, and just kind of enjoy the nice weather after a long winter. So it's a really, really fun day just to relax and have some fun with your friends. That sounds like a lot of fun. I would like to go for sure. So. My one of my favorite things on campus is our scholarship Swanee weekend. Um, 
which happens every year. Um, and it's where students have the opportunity to present the research that they've been doing on campus. Um, and so we have over a hundred different presentations, um, students standing by to talk to friends, faculty members and present what they've been doing. So my favorite by far was a study done about whether or not if there's a fight in the hockey game, it turns the outcome towards a win for the, the winning team of the fight. So um, a lot of good research going on, obviously, outside of that. So a lot of fun. Oh, I like that one, too. Um, so at Lawrence, we have this wonderful music conservatory. So all of our um, like dances, we have a winter carnival. There's um, there's a president's ball. Um, we have like a senior uh, sort of senior celebration night. They all have live music and, and sometimes the professors will perform for the students to celebrate them or vice versa. So um, I uh, we also have a spring um, like kind of popular music festival similar to Bonnaroo called LU Aru, which which is, you know, like an outdoor live music festival. Uh, people put out blankets and and there are no bumper cars though so yeah I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to complain about that one but but yeah LU Aru is definitely a student favorite. I would say my favorite um, one at Kenyon is uh, right at the beginning of the fall semester we have our, a huge community feast and so actually my my zoom background is middle path behind me so literally on middle path you have uh, the college puts out the entirety of the entirety of the path uh, long tables and actually hay bales that you sit on and we feature a lot of local food uh, as kind of a, a large feast um, and all the students come and all the faculty and staff and basically everyone at Kenyon comes and just enjoys a feast and it's a really fun and communal way to kind of kick off the start of the um, fall semester so uh, really really enjoyable um, time there. I would have to kind of piggyback off of Lawrence and say that we do something similar. It's called Party in the Park. We bring in pretty well-known artists to campus every spring. Um, and previously, we've had ex-ambassadors, Jesse McCartney, T. Payne, JC Derulo. So some well-known artists. And then it's free for all students in the park overlooking downtown and campus. So it's a really fun event. I always love hearing these great traditions and I'm sure the students are excited about making one of your traditions their new tradition when they attend. Um, now I'm gonna call on your expertise because you guys do this for a living and you work with students all year round um, that are going through the college search process. And we have lots of juniors online. So what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? We'll go in that same order that you presented again. So Beloit up first. I think this is a common one, but I would say to visit campuses. It's really hard, especially in this virtual world. I mean, we're kind of forced into it, um, but campuses are really different on a screen compared to in person. So I think if colleges are open for visits, as I think a lot of us are on, on this panel, um, it's really important to get out, meet with some current students, meet with students that aren't employed by the admissions office and hear what they have to say and hear about their experiences. I would definitely say after watching myself, uh, my younger sister, and now my brother, who will be a first year student uh, this coming year, um, is to start a little bit early in the summer when things are kind of relaxed, calm down, take a deep breath and sort of take it bit by bit. So do a little bit on a Saturday, maybe an hour's worth of research for different schools and, and sort of plan it out a little bit. Um, waiting till the last minute uh, is, um, not always the best, the best choice, so. Well, Yana and Reese have stolen my two. I, I, I had a backup, but no, um, I will, I will provide you with, a, with one piece of advice and one brief story. And the advice is to make a spreadsheet um, so that you can keep track of all that visiting and research that you're, that you're doing. Um, and the other is to, to know that, um, just because like, so my, my first college visit was, was not good. My parents sort of like interrupted our family vacation to drag my sister and I to a college. And it was like super hot and we'd been in the car all day. And it was like, wait, we're going to a college visit. I'm a sophomore, what's going on? And I kind of hated it. And thankfully every, every other college I ever visited was like, this is amazing because I had, I had like put this first college as, as like not a good experience. So everything topped that. So if you can find a college that you're like not super excited about and, and then every one you visit after that will just be amazing. I would say um, in terms of a piece of, of college advice, I would really, um, as you're kind of 
continuing or thinking right now uh, about starting off the college search process, I would really urge you to think about really um, giving yourself the space to kind of reflect on what all you want to ultimately accomplish during your college experience and really what all you want to get out of your college experience. Because if you can reflect on that and really think about your wants and your needs uh, with, with your upcoming choice, your upcoming college, you can let that kind of dictate what schools you're considering as opposed to vice versa and saying, I'm looking at, you know, schools A, B, C, D, and I need to think, uh, I need to understand if they have all these other things that I'm looking for, right? If you can think on the front end, all the things that are important to you that you need and want in a college, and then let that kind of uh, guide your search process, I think that will really pay dividends in a lot of ways. I would say to utilize your resources. You don't have to do this alone. Um, as admissions counselors, that's what we're here for. So you need guidance throughout the process or some advice. We see a lot of different student perspectives and we're here to guide you through that process so that it does make sense for you. And I would add on to that and just say, um, you do have lots of resources and your school counselors are excellent resources. You may end up um, at a school that you've never heard of because you talked to someone and they said, hey, this could be a really great place for you. There is a college and university out there for every single one of you. And I think I can speak for everyone on the panel and say like this we should be fun too. So have a little fun. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. As you close out, there'll be a quick four question survey. So you hope we hope that you'll um, provide us with, with some feedback. We also hope that you had fun in this format and that you'll sign up for more sessions. There's still two more hours worth of this tonight. Um, also, if you have questions, feel free to join that virtual meeting with your counselors and ask questions in the counselor corner. You should have gotten an email about that when with the link to sign up or to join this meeting. And the recording of this um, event will be available within one week at strivescan.com slash, slash Ignatius. Um, best wishes with your college search, everyone, and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.